Let's keep it rolling here. Wine time. Beautiful breakdown. Let's talk about a game that uh, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. This game feels like it should be in Ireland uh, just because I think this is <laughs> what does. opened up last year in <laughs> Ireland, I think. Uh, but uh, this is Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, a Notre Dame team that I don't know, man. I just don't know what to do with Notre Dame in general. I don't want to believe in them, but they keep slowly climbing up the rankings here. They had, you know, one slip up game. And in this college football world that we live in now, those one slip up games are uh, acceptable now. But uh, here we are. And, and everyone's betting Notre Dame as well, unsurprisingly, uh, against Georgia Tech. 80% of the bets, 88% of the money on Notre Dame here. Very early on on the, seat, on the week, I should say. This opened up at an eight line time, and it has skyrocketed to uh, Notre Dame. Opened up at an eight, and it moved up two points to ten here on the fourteenth on Monday. So it's very fascinating. There, I went up from to a ten to an eleven to an eleven and a half. Even got up to twelve to settle back down to ten and a half, or excuse me, eleven and a half this morning, or I should say yesterday morning. But wow, pretty interesting line movement and. With all that, I mean, at least if you're, you know, a guy that bets line movement, you are at least uh, feeling good about yourself because, like I said, 80% of the money and 88% of the bets are on Notre Dame, and at least it's moving in that direction here. For the total, 83% of the bets, 88% of the money on the over here, and we are at a 49, uh, opened at 49, and has not moved here. So uh, another game where I probably lean under here, um, with the market, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this one, Juan. Yeah, this is a good matchup right here. Um, Georgia Tech surprising a lot of folks this season, being four and two. You know, Brent Key has his team heading in the right direction. Um, with that being said, what does Georgia Tech like to do, man? They like to run the ball. They're running the ball at a 54, 54% rate. It's top 25 in the nation. Um, we see that's what they like to do. They've got a good quarterback over there at Haynes King. Um, doesn't have to do too much to the air. He likes to get involved with his legs as well. Also got a really good running back over there in Jamal Haynes, one of the better running backs in the ACC. Um, very impressed by this Georgia Tech team. And uh, this spread definitely does surprise me a little bit. Um, but we're not going to get to the spread in this one, guys. We're going to get back to the total in this one again. Um, Notre Dame, what do they like to do? They like to run the ball. Um, they don't like to ask Riley Leonard to do too much like he was doing at Duke, uh, throwing the ball all over the place. He throws the ball, average about five to six yards uh, a pass. Um, they're more of a run first, run, run, pass. Uh, kind of offense here. Notre Dame, elite offensive line, you know, offensive line you right there, um, as they've gotten the nickname over the last couple of years, developed a lot of good NFL talent over there. They still have a lot of talent over there on the offensive line. And this is a game Notre Dame definitely needs, man. Um, you know, they get this win right here. I don't know if they lose another game this season, potentially. I know they've got USC later this season. Um, that might be the next uh, toughest matchup for them. Um, very much a college football playoff team. Marcus Freeman has this team heading in the right direction, especially coming off, uh, you know, first loss of the season, uh, took an L against Texas A&M. You know, ever since then, uh, they've been lights out, though, coming in at number 12. Um, Notre Dame also has a very physical front on defense. These guys like to get to the quarterback. Um, you know, they're big guys over there. Um, yeah, and I, I like both of these defenses. Um, both of them are very physical. Uh, Notre Dame, their secondary is only getting better week by week here. Um, allowing very little pass yards every single game. Um, with that being said, man, we got a total here about 50. I hate to sound like a broken record here, man, but I'm only under 50 in this spot, minus 110. I don't think this hits 45, Jose. Two teams that I like to, again, two teams that like to run the ball, um, that will run the ball, and that are going to take their time off the clock and uh, try to burn this game out. So give me the under 50 here in a game that I don't think hits 45. I see it's a 49 right now at some spots. Still like the 49, still endorse the 49. Um but yeah, Brent Key against Marcus Freeman. This is gonna be this is gonna be a good matchup, grind out matchup. This doesn't hit forty five under. All right, under that makes I mean that makes a whole lot of sense to me with the market. Uh, so I one hundred percent agree with you there. Yeah, under nut flush saying North Carolina put up thirty four inch. Yeah, they did. Uh, North Carolina did put up a lot of points against that Georgia Tech. With that being said, I think they're gonna clean things up here. Notre Dame doesn't have the most explosive offense. Yeah, they smashed in their last game against, I believe it was Stanford, I want to say. Um, but by any means, they're not trying to blow these teams out of the building. They're trying to get these Ws. They've got bigger goals in mind at the end of the season for this team. Um, they're just trying to get the wins. Do they cover this spread in this one? Maybe. Um, but I just think this is another under spot right here. Two teams that love to run the ball. That Notre Dame, they're really good uh, red zone defense as well. 
Um, so I think they're going to be able to stop Georgia Tech when they get down the field. Even if Georgia Tech is moving the ball downfield, taking time off the clock, I think they're going to have to settle for field goals. All right. Under here as well. I agree with you. I like the under in this game.